See if she can stop me. Now she can. Welcome to the Cafe Nutty Show. I am your host, the Goldsmith. It is the 15th of April, 2024. It is a Monday. And being a little under the weather on Friday, I didn't get a chance. I didn't get the chance that I wanted to have, that I should have had, that I really should have taken to talk about the schedule for Genesis Week 2024 coming out. And I, I want to get into that a little bit. Obviously, it's old news. It's, that's reviewing back to Friday. But I do want to go over that. I do want to touch on a few things along the way. I'm sure we're going to get back into it in the future. Um, I'm sure that when we have some more details for Hackathon, it's worth going over the schedule again. When we've got some more details about uh, the other other elements in the award ceremony. It's worth going over what the schedule is going to be, and we'll get into that maybe even more in detail when we get really close to kind of uh, give people the opportunity to start, you know, fine tuning their schedule if they're going. But just go over on a, on a cursory glance and go over this idea that Upland has set up there of prizes, 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 and one of them obviously very specific into that announcement we also have three uh three big announcements today ah, let's let's go let's call it two and a half um big excitement uh, exciting announcements obviously the temporary collection is new uh we do have the upx only sale tomorrow that's something that i guess we knew about um or we've known about i should say uh we've talked about you know doing this and doing that and getting ready for it you do that to buy one thing in order to qualify but you know it is actually here for the registration um i guess that's two i guess that's two. Oh yeah the third thing the third thing is uh we finally get there or at least i do and a lot of other people the average person the person who hasn't had you know two thousand followers on on twitter the person who hasn't had a 15 year old account that they linked uh that's a lot of people are you know in that kind of you know middling point you know not the biggest not the oldest account but Hitting that, uh, you know, hitting that first level, level one on the Sparklet airdrop uh, platform. So getting into that, we had that admission drop. So if you have another mission, I did promise that whenever we have a mission, it's definitely worth highlighting, reminding people to get in and do it. Because if you don't do that mission within the uh, the, the time frame, it's been running about two to three days. Uh, when you do, if you don't do that mission within the time frame of it being available. You miss that mission. So we definitely don't want people to miss those missions when they're actually active and happening. So uh, we'll swing back and do that. But before we get into all that, all views and opinions are expressed by me or those that are expressed by me on mine and mine alone. Should be taking as a game strategy or financial advice that represents the game or the team of Upland. Any guests or contributors we do have on to have their own opinions, they're welcome to them. They don't represent myself, the goals for the Cafe Netflix show, the team of Upland, the game of Upland. They should be taking as a game strategy or financial advice. That's not a long one. We can get that out pretty quick and pretty easy now. But uh, take a quick look, swing back here, and let's start with the platform because the platform is one that, uh, again, worth putting our eyes on every couple days. We're not going to have a new announcement every day. We're not going to have a new challenge every day. We kind of know that by now. We know that by now. But we can take a look here and remind ourselves of where we are. And I had this really cool thing happen just barely. And let's see if I can share it so you can see it too. Because uh, if you're watching on on uh, YouTube, why not? Why not see? Oh my gosh, I just missed it. I just missed it. What we just missed was when I first logged in, it gave me this beautiful uh, message that says, you've logged up or leveled up. And uh, here I am, level two. So it's an interesting thing. And again, I, you know, this has already been mentioned, I hope. Um, it's been noticed by myself and many others is that idea that there's a threshold. There's a threshold of 2,400 within trying to make you to get uh, make you work to get to level one. And once you get to level one, it's actually easier to get to level two uh, than it was to get to level one. But less activity needed to go from level one to level two than from you know guest to level one. And kind of that is is a, is a, there's this threshold where if you participate once or twice, if you have a really small account, if you started your account last week. You may get uh, essentially leveled out or thresholded out you, where you don't hit the threshold, where you don't get the prize, where uh, it kind of it discourages people from you know trying to spool up or spin up or you know the multi account thing. Because if it's not an account, if it's not a Twitter account that you've actually maintained for a while, if it's not one you're actually going to be active with, uh, if you're not going to be active with all all the activities, and you're not going to have enough uh, you know enough followers, and it's not an old enough account then 
you're not going to get the benefit. I think that's uh, th there's a point to that. I mean, it, it, as long as the threshold is set in such a way that the average person with a Twitter account that wasn't started yesterday, that if they put enough work and enough time in uh, over the course of 20 days, they at least get to level one and you maybe threshold out some people who maybe only participate in two of the activities. Maybe just maybe it's worthwhile. We'll have to see at the end of this month. We'll have to see more, how many more activities come in. By my math, uh, we are halfway through or over halfway through, I should say. Um, you know, we've got eight days left uh, out of 20. And at this point, it's possible. I'm going to at least hit level two. Um, I If Upland, I would, wouldn't be hurt if Upland, you know, kind of backloads things. You know, get it towards the end and makes things come more quickly and, and gives me some more points along the way. But, you know, at least I can get out of level one. That'll feel good. Uh, a lot of people here who, uh, you know, have, you know, put a lot of effort into trying to cultivate and grow new followers and do fall for fall campaigns. They're starting to see some of them that they moved up their multiplier, which is cool. Uh, I haven't got really into fall for fall campaigns. If I can naturally progress until a multiplier of five instead of the four, I'm not going to cry. It's not a bad idea. It's something that I definitely would like to be the case because ultimately the higher the level we end up with at the end of this period, at the end of this platform, chapter one, the more sparklet we're going to get. And I want more sparklet. So, uh, you know, we are at a point where a lot of people have finally, after five missions, you know, five replies, five reposts, five likes, you know, with that four times multiplier, which is, again, that's kind of the, the median here where a lot of people are, uh, you're finally going to be in level one, which means you're actually, if all things stop tomorrow, you're actually going to be gaining sparklet. Uh, I'd like to get it at a higher level, higher the level, the more sparklet I'll get. So looking forward to that. And uh, come on up, Lynn. Just drop me some more missions. I'm going to keep doing them. Please, 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 please. Uh, we'll get that uh, get that uh, going here for the rest of uh, this chapter. Don't we? We'll have future chapters. And if we're going to have future chapters and we're going to have similar rules and all of that, if you carry in more followers because you grew those followers organically and you continue to participate in the second chapter and the third chapter, maybe the 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 payouts aren't as high. Maybe they are as high. I don't know. Upland's going to have to determine that. The pay, the pay on this, the... Um, Depending on the incentivization that they want to put out there at the time, but theoretically, maybe you have a higher multiplier next time because you did stuff this cycle to try to increase your followers. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. And again, maybe maybe you can uh, put more effort into your content and, and build your followers that are people outside of Upwind as well, and maybe that helps the future. Cross your fingers. Let's hope. Again, we're all here for Upwind, but I mean, there's a lot of people who are, you know, around for other projects as well new plot people coming in and uh, those who are, have been here for a while it's nice to get some sparkle in the account uh we had a spark weekend over the weekend let's get down to where we are though as of today and here we are uh first things first i'm gonna i'm gonna take a step back to friday because this is a big news for me this is one i i wish i was feeling better on friday so i could have gone over and here it is, Genesis Live, Agenda and Prizes, sneak peek. The agenda is nice for me because you know, I had some questions and I was you know, thinking about you know, what is the schedule going to look like. I know that it's going to be a full day on Friday. I know that it's going to be um, a, you know, that evening on Thursday. Um, but you know, trying to wrap my head around you know, what else am I going to do while in Vegas? Am I going to do things with Uplanders? Do I, am I going to go see my friends who live in Vegas who are totally not involved in Upland in any way, shape, or form. Uh, what's my schedule look like? I know how many days I'm going to be there because I've already booked the flights. But it is nice to have that foundation of I can look forward to my Upland events. There's nothing I'm skipping out on, obviously. I'm not going to take a nap through through some uh, you know stage presentation or panel. I'm not going to take a nap through, uh, you know, while people have booths. I, I, it was never in the cards. It was never going to happen. But it's nice to know when things are. So I can start planning if I've got, you know, a uh, breakfast or I've got a an event that I'm going to do myself in the area. So uh, getting into some of these things that that you know in the schedule, get in, get into all that's there. But to the big thing, the big thing that's also there, along with the timing, along with the schedule, along with knowing a little more what's going to happen. Oh yeah, did Upland mention prizes? Did we say prizes at this Genesis Live event in Las Vegas? We're raising the stakes higher. 
than ever before with the most unique and exclusive ways to win Spark and other prizes Upwind has ever offered. Again, here's the thing is they bring Spark in here again. We've talked about this idea, and they already snuck this idea of Spark in earlier, but Spark is, if it isn't, I will be surprised. Spark is going to be a big part of Genesis Week 2024. Um, the utility of Spark is supposed to be coming out this quarter or AMA. I think that it may be, I was hoping it was going to be sooner or later, but it could be a little ways out because I could see them so trying to supercharge this concept of not only, you know, the earning of Sparklet and the building of Sparklet and potentially working towards the coin, which again, we don't have a date on. I'm not speculating on the date of when Sparklet will, the coin may be launched, but to build up to that, the utility that you have inside of Upland to justify people having in the coin in the first place, if that happens, um, I do see that as being a big focus for Genesis Week 2024 this year. And I think we'll get more information about that as we get closer. Um, aside from that, let's take a sneak peek at the first of the giveaways, a high T ultra rare property. Again, that is in London giveaway entry for every single attendee and you get a second entry for a different again they separate is it here's here's one entry one prize here's a separate entry for a separate prize you could win both theoretically if you get really lucky i mean in my case i could enter for both and win neither because that's what's going to happen because that's my luck in upwin but i accept the fact that somebody somebody will win so good luck for them aside from that we're going to give you a sneak peek again of this set of giveaways. It's two giveaways side by side in parallel. And uh, that second entry you get is for referring a friend. So that's a cool thing because I, I would want to put that out there. And I've already kind of suggested this is that's one of the ways Upwind grows. I'll, you know, obviously the Sparklet uh, is meant, the Sparklet platform, the Sparklet airdrop is meant to bring in people who have a different view of what they're interested in blockchain. And, you know, that these coin drops, these people getting interested in these airdrops, that is a type of blockchain player that we haven't had an upland in the past. Uh, if we have enough reasons for people to stay, um, if they get involved, if they come and if they enter the space, if there's enough reason for them to stay, then maybe it's nice to bring those people in. But this is another way of bringing new people in. And that is this idea that people know people like them. So people who do this know people who have some of the same interest. And it isn't always the case. I know a lot of uplanders say, I can't find a single one of my friends who wants to get involved in upland. I've talked to them about it, blah, blah, blah. I've heard that, that statement, that phrase a lot. It is that idea that, you know, there are a lot of people who um, are actually different in many ways from their friends. But here's an opportunity to find your friend who's a lot like you or somebody you know who is an upland already, a, f a friend who is already an upland, who hasn't made a decision to go to Genesis Week yet, who's about to make it and say, hey, we're buddies, right? You want to give me a little benefit? You want to give me a little help? Just put my name in when you sign up as 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 my uh, or as the person who referred you. And if that's the case, if that's all it takes. I'll take an ultra layer property for doing that. Uh, and here is the full agenda. We're going to take a quick look at that. Um, I want to look at the, the times and what's going on and leave some of it for later. Leave some of the rest for later. Leave the promotion. Leave the idea of, you know, it, ooh, ah, ultra rare. Let's just say, ooh, ah, there's a couple of old, ultra rares. That's a big deal. I like the product that there's prizes there. That's a cool drawing. This can't be the biggest and the only thing that gets given away. We had it, the first ever Stock Car Pro Stock Car given away last year we had the first ever first ever opportunities to have um you know generalized cafes given out last year <laughs> they haven't opened yet i'm gonna put a caveat there so maybe they're not as big as a prize as i thought they were but i thought that was a tremendous prize i thought the opportunity to be one of the first five cafes in the game of upwind that could ultimately you know build you a platform a significant platform at least i thought at the time maybe it still can maybe that could go circle back and come back again but that was an opportunity i saw that as a huge opportunity uh we also had the first ever totem in the in the game of upwind and the best totem you know get given out so there was a, there was a ton of great prizes last year on top of um, you know, a number of other prizes that were, you know, were sprinkled in throughout. Um, but 
if Upland's saying we have so much b- bigger prizes this year, so many more prizes, we're giving a, a tons of things away. This can't be the biggest. This can't be the biggest. And well, sure, it's a big prize. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else Upland's giving away. But it's a nice sneak peek. It's nice, nice to know that this is something that we could be getting that will be there. Let's get into the schedule itself. That's what I'm excited about. So taking a look here, Thursday night, and they put a time on it. When I talked to to X1 on this back at the beginning of the announcement, it sounded like it was like a eh, to whenever. But the uh, the happy hour meet and greet kick off five thirty to eight o'clock, and that is on Thursday. Um, I'm gonna go and, and look at my net pay and any calendar because I keep forgetting. But that's Thursday the sixth, Thursday the sixth of June. Um, I'm flying in the fifth on on Wednesday. That means that I can go hang out with Uplanders again. You know, a lot of us already know some other people that we like to spend time with in this space. I can go, I can go and spend some time with a, you know, with some other upwinners during the day. I'm gonna do my own little private meet and greet. Maybe, maybe I'd try to make that a little larger and meet more people and and maybe meet some upwinners for the first time. But um, I'm already gonna do some some pre gaming on, on on Thursday, meeting people and the like. But that time between five thirty and eight, it's loud. It's a you know, it's a chance to get a couple of beverages to, you know, kind of loosen yourself up and enjoy yourself with other uplanders. But it's loud for me with somebody who has a little bit of tinnitus that kicks in there every now and then it is a lot. But as some people have already said, you know, I'm going to give Shaq credit for this is, uh, you know, we had talked about going to do an event on Thursday night and, um, you know, going and doing something other than staying at the bar. And she made this point about, yeah, after that, ends you can continue to spend time with those people and last year um after the upwind official event ended that bar the cast bar continues to be there people can continue to stay and hang out it gets quieter afterwards and people can you know continue to have those conversations so officially the happy hour meet and greet is from 5 30 p.m to 8 p.m and what that means is the beverages are open and paid for by upland start well I should say buy your ticket, really, you know, half a dozen, one, six, the other, right? Start your Genesis experience with complimentary drinks and engaging conversation with our happy hour. It's the perfect opportunity to connect with fellow Uplanders in a relaxed setting. Again, for me, it was very loud last year. Uh, The cast bar, it's not a huge space. Um, it is open. It's not like it's like all tied in with, with walls and everything, but it's, it's not a huge space, but it got really loud for us last year. And, uh, you know, once it quieted down, definitely easier to hear people. Sometimes you can, you know, spread out a little bit and talk to people, uh, you know, have more private conversations, but I don't know. Um, I, the idea, the concept that, that Shaq put out there with the waiting and seeing and waiting until things, you know, kind of sugar out at the end and seeing, uh, you know, if you can have more, more direct conversations, you actually hear somebody afterwards. That'd be fun. I look forward to that. Um, and then, of course, Friday. Friday's the big day. Jam-packed Friday. Genesis Live. 9 a.m. to 9.30. We're going to breakfast buffet and check-in. Ah, half an hour breakfast. That's a quick one. But I'll, uh, Last year, the food was great. And uh, we'll see how it goes this year. Expected the same. 9.30, 10 a.m. Welcome from the Founders. Obviously, people are still at the seat at the table. Uh, welcome to the founders. They, you know, we do get to see Dirk and Adon come on the stage, uh, kind of open up um, the activities for the day, setting the stage for the rest of the day. Uh, 10 to 10.30 is the live city opening. Only half an hour to an opening. Well, let's be fair. The first 10 minutes are the most exciting. A lot of the best properties get scooped up in those first 10 minutes. We've seen some cities where, you know, all the, all the most speculating neighborhoods, they get minted out in the first 10 minutes. And then, you know, maybe uh, you get to that point, you get to that threshold, you get to a certain point where people start slowing down and, you know, those big giant properties in that neighborhood that nobody, nobody's really excited about. Maybe those properties go unminted and maybe people decide whether or not they're going to mint those and maybe they don't. And, and maybe the optics that people brought in with them doesn't go as far as they expected to. And they slow down relatively quickly. So that half an hour threshold to do a live city opening isn't too bad. I mean, uh, you know, I could see people still going and uh, and minting later in the day, but I could definitely see this concept that all the excitement or most of the excitement, if you are going to be there live in person, half an hour is not a bad amount of time to get most of that through and out of the way. All right, getting back to it. There I go. I can actually see it. Um, 
at 10 a.m., 10.30, Live City out of the way. 10.30 a.m. to 11.30, there will be the roadmap and the AMA deep dive into the future, all the things that the future holds for Upland with a roadmap presentation, followed by an engaging Ask Me Anything type session. 11.30 is the exhibitor booths that are going to open. Again, the exhibitor booths are what a lot of people are looking forward to. They want to share their project. They want to see what projects are going on. They want to see what other Uplanders are working on and learn more about the game. Last year, we had a couple exciting booths that had more to do with the future of Upland than they had to do with the present. They had more to do with Layer 2 than they had to do with Layer 1. Uh, we had Playmo Games in last year with a VR experience. They had Playmo Games last year with what would later become the X metaphor. We would we would later see what the uh, you know what the sorry the, the range style shooter looked like, range style, range style target shooting looked like, but that was there. That was a preview of it. So that was exciting to see that project. There was other projects. There was nodes that were in the game. There was people who have places in in the game of Upwind. Um, you know, spaces, places, doing things in, in, in discords and layer twos. And it was an opportunity to get those those uh, projects out in front of people who might not already be familiar with them. And it was just a lot of fun to, to see people face to face talking about their project and getting more information if you weren't familiar. Uh, between 12 and 1, we're going to have some lunch again. The food was good last year. I'm looking forward to being good again this year. One to two is the hackathon finals. Witness the creativity of Uplands community of, as finalists pitch their cutting edge projects again we don't have the details on the hackathon i'm looking forward to more we're within two months of of genesis week we're going to see them at some point in the not so distant future 2 p.m to 4 30 p.m we're going to have the panels exhibitions racing activities exciting 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 uh, two to two at uh, two to four thirty again. That gives us two and a half hours for all of that. It like, sounds like there's probably going to be layers and timing and scheduling. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, four thirty p.m. to seven p.m. Rest and prepare for the evening. Relax and recharge before the evening's festivities. And then from seven to eight ten again. Upland's not saying where. They're not saying where and how. But this is what I see. I mean, the only thing that works here for timing is. Rest and preparation has to include take the time and get to the venue because they're giving us, you know, that the idea of uh, two and a half hours to play with that has to be to get over to the venue to the go kart track. And that means we have to be having that dinner and award show at the go kart track, knowing that that is rented out for the evening for all of us. 7 p.m. to 8 10 p.m. Again, that's when dinner and the award show are going to be. Again, uh, math here says it has to be at the go karts because at 8.30, that's when the go-karts and prizes start. Um, 8.30 to 11, go-karts and prizes, unless they think we can get there in 20 minutes. And if we can, that's incredible. If we're going to do dinner at uh, at at the hotel or at the venue and then go over to the go-karts, again, I don't see that happening, but we'll be, I'll be surprised if I'm surprised. I'll play and give more, us more details on that. End the day with thrilling go-kart races and a host of prizes, ensuring a perfect close to an exciting day. And... But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more is that last year after things got done, things weren't done. You know, people people who chose to engage in activities in Vegas, things like, I don't know, there's a casino right there uh, or many, many, many casinos right there. If uh, if people engage in other other activities with Uplanders and go hang out, uh, you know, Vegas is a city that, you know, it's hard to sleep. It can be hard to sleep when you're in the, in, in the casino. It's a good opportunity to spend time with other Uplanders and just enjoying yourself. And, uh, of course, the next day, the Saturday, I'm there all day. I don't fly out until Sunday. That was intentional. I flew out on Saturday last year. I felt like I could have enjoyed my my Saturday more if I you know, I wasn't going to have to fly out in the afternoon on Sunday so, or on Saturday. So I fly out on Sunday. Uh, it also is uh, is something that uh, maybe maybe I have real reason to maybe have a bean or something while I'm in the city. And uh, I'm still looking at my schedule for that. But if you haven't made your plans yet, I would I would put that idea out there that it's worth having that buffer day, the buffer day in, which is the Wednesday, or at least get there early on, on uh, Thursday. Don't show up at, you know, don't have your flight come in at four o'clock and you'll know, say, I'm going to get over four five three to the hotel. 
it's a little pretty tight schedule. Doesn't get the same, same time to decompress. Doesn't get your same time to see the city or do whatever you want to do while you're there. Or spend time with friends. So I mean, just consider that the the decompress on the way in, decompress on the way out. Uh, I'm taking advantage of that, and I hope you do too, or have the chance to, opportunity, time to, if uh, if you are coming. So again, special prize announcement. We talked about the fact that Upland saying the biggest giveaway ever. We talked about ultra rares. I think there's going to be more. I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, I cannot imagine that this is the only big prize. If Upland is saying the biggest prizes ever, they've got to give us some of the biggest prizes ever. They have to give us large amounts of spark, like crazy amounts of sparklet as a prize here, as bright prize there. They have to give something out, some something that we don't know about the game of Upland. Maybe maybe we get into you know some next layer of the game of up when we talked about you know that that we thought cafes were going to be a big part of the game and we a year on a year on from cafes coming into the game we still um the only iteration of a cafe that exists some would argue is not a traditional cafe but the only are very iteration of a cafe that exists outside of what upland's been running outside of a couple events that were done with uh partner organizations obviously uh first Player run again. Player first. Kind of had to run a little bit of a uh, a project with Upwind to get the to get the project brought in. But of course, that would be a Left House Theater. That was the first real cafe, as far as I'm concerned. That was player run. Um, and I like seeing it. I like that it happened. It's great that it happened. I'm looking for more iterations of it. But I would argue that uh, one of the big promises from last year hasn't happened yet. Maybe it gets brought in this year. Maybe it's it's uh, something entirely different. That's the big iteration, the big surprise, the big build up that comes from Genesis Week 2024, the big shifting of of the game, maybe. And we know that UGC is a focus that Upwind wants to continue to build and uh, AI is threatening to be a part of UGC. We'll have to see how that gets rolled in. And maybe just maybe we'll learn a lot about the future of the game at Genesis Week 2024. And I am fully and wholly prepared for it because I I think that's what Genesis Week often gives us, that opportunity to see a little bit of a shift in the game or a new new aspect of the game. Sparklet Airdrop Collection. So now this is a bit that's real. That's real news that uh, is new new, it is not something that uh, we expected to come. Um, I didn't expect it to come. But what it really is is the beginning of something that some people speculated could be a thing. I speculated could be a thing. People talked about, and that is this idea of temporary collections, this idea of holding these properties, ones that say Noel during the holiday season, or um, get these properties during this specific uh, event. It's it's right next to uh, the World Cup for FIFA, and you hold these properties in this neighborhood that happens to be called whatever it has to be happened to be named after a country that is playing the world cup or hold these these properties in this city during this time period and maybe there is a special collection for having at least five properties in blank city i you know we saw that as a potential as something that could uh, kind of invigorate people about an event or on pro- a number of properties in an area around a specific time or a specific event. And here's the first iteration to celebrate the mighty airdrop campaign. We have been going on at the moment. We have going on at the moment. We've dropped some salvatory new collections in the game to complete them. Simply collect addresses with air drop or spark in the name to combine together for a fantastic multiplier and UPX reward in uh, their own specific collections they're available in game right now get collecting theoretically this is more about what you already have than getting new properties because if you've got five properties that are that are right next to each other on blank street on claire street on bel-air street on whatever the case is that has the word air in it and you just happen to have them Right on, right on. Put them in the collection. Take the take advantage. But going and buying, you know, at you know, two times mint because you know ev- everybody who has those properties, they figure it out, they mark them up. They're they're not selling them at mint price. Um, that might not be as valuable. They might not be as valuable because I'll tell you why. Uh, we'll get into this in a little more detail. But this is a temporary event. You can temporarily get in, anyways. 
Um, you know, the yield boost is kind of uh, this thematic collection with the yield boost. But let's take a look at what it really means here. Get ready for an exhilarating opportunity. An up and limited time airdrop collections. One more time. Limited time. So they're not going to be there forever. So those not being there forever, I wouldn't spend a lot extra on those properties. The one-time bonus, that's nice. That's nice. But that's not the point of hitting these collections. The point of hitting collections with two and a half times multiplier is to get the two and a half times multiplier. It's, uh, that's usually the idea. But if it's limited time, then what does that mean? Let's get into it a little bit more. A specific event uh, that integrates the excitement of airdrops with property collections starting Monday, Monday the 15th. That's today, 9 AMPT. Uploaders can participate in these collections, exclusive collections. And again, no exclusives here. Limited, two rares, no exclusives. They're using that word again, exclusive. When we talk about collections, but they're not talking about exclusive collections. Just saying, it's happened again, keeps happening. Multiple meanings, same word. Uh, collections by acquiring properties on streets whose names contain, again, contain, not are, contain air, drop, and spark. And with the idea of air, there's a lot of words that can, can, can you know, include the word air. Claire. Bel Air. Anything that, anything that includes... Um, you know, uh, anything that 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 includes air as a portion of the word again could definitely fall in this in this uh, category. Uh, I mean, drop could be the beginning of the word, could be the end, could be droplet. What it could be, whatever the case is, it just has to include it somewhere in the word. Um, collection details and rewards. Each theme collection offers unique rewards and yield boosts, enhancing both your gaming experience and your portfolio. The Air Street Collection, five properties with air in the name to qualify. Limited collection, 1.57 yield boost and 1,600 UPX bonus. Drop Streets, three properties on streets with the drop to enter. Uh, rare collection, 2.32 yield boost and a whopping 10,800 UPX uh, bonus. Spark Street Collection, acquire three properties on streets featuring Spark. Enjoy a yield boost 2.34 times and 11,300 UPX bonus one time drop. There you go. Uh, players must maintain their collection for a standard holding periods to receive the one time bonus. Uh, limited bonus three days, you get the limited collection. The rare, hold for 21 days straight. Please note the snapshot for the drawing. There is a drawing will occur before the completion of these holding periods. Ooh. You have to hold it during this period. These temporary collections will be available until May the 15th at 9 a.m. PT. So it does increase your, your, your earnings rate. It does increase your dividends. It's a multiplier on the dividends. But just keep in mind that it's for a short period of time. Enter to win a Bermuda property. Ooh, ah. So there is a snapshot coming up. The, uh, the stakes are high as each completed collection grants you one opportunity uh, and one entry into a drawing to win a coveted Bermuda property. With three collections, that's three chances to win. Ensure your collections are completed by Wednesday, Wednesday, April 24th at 9 a.m. PT. That's interesting. It's interesting because it's before you can complete an entire holding period. What does that mean? Uh, on, on the rares, anyways. Uh, could that, and a, a complete holding period on the rares. What does that mean? That means that you can't hold them. And, uh, and get your your bonus for holding, and get rid of them, and send them off to somebody else, and and they and they can't, uh, you know, incidentally end up with that uh, entry into the Bermuda property. Uh, it means that uh, you have a benefit for the Bermuda property now with a longer period of participating. Again, potentially, potentially, if we have a city release with air or drop or spark streets in that new uh city drop or city release hint hint wink wink nod nod up and has said we have another city release this quarter <coughs> but it's up and said we're gonna have it specifically in, in blossom season that's before genesis week maybe just maybe that that city was gonna have one of these collections in it and if you get that collection maybe you could get it in here but you won't be part of that bermuda that bermuda uh drawing 
Uh, remember, you must maintain ownership of the properties in your collections at the time of the snapshot to qualify for the drawing. This is your chance to boost your upland journey with exclusive rewards. Again, exclusive would not mean exclusive, but mean exclusive. Uh, and possibly add a Bermuda property to your assets. Best of luck to all players. Start building those collections now. Easy enough. Uh, I know, like I said, a lot of the people who were most excited about these were the people who already own properties with the word air in them. Go figure. Good for them. I was surprised. I was surprised that, you know, maybe if I said Spark Street somewhere, I would have bought a whole bunch of them. I own some upland. I own some miles. I don't own any Spark Roads or Spark Streets or Spark Avenues. And maybe I should. Maybe I should have. Uh, maybe I should have seen it coming. Maybe I will be more selective or maybe even allow it to modify what properties or what collections, or what areas I hold properties in, knowing that Upland might do one of these again, because they've done it before with Miles. They've done it before with Upland. So we'll see. We'll see how that sugars out and how that works out. And if just maybe I decide to head that direction and change my, my uh, holding or purchasing or minting pro properties um, of properties here in the future. Did you pick up? Did you pick up an ornament bundle? During our recent sale, again, USD sale, you buy the bundle. In my case, you pay USD for it. Everyone paid USD for the bundle. But in my case, you pay USD for it with the idea that you're going to make more OPEX than you put in USD. And guess what? You keep all the ornaments. You keep all the ornaments because you flipped out the uh, the the BEs. And in my case, I did get a little lucky. I did get a lucky with some, some golds, and I was able to sell those at a a little bit of a profit again, USD to OPEX. We know it's not 1000 to one. I got more than a thousand to one. Um, so it was relatively happy. And oh, by the way, I kept all my ornaments, so it happened to work out. But I also, I also earned an entry for a UPX exclusive. Again, you can only buy with UPX. How often does that happen in Upland anymore? You can only buy with UPX, uh, in this store sale. Good news, you're eligible for a UPX only sale of some fantastic map assets. They're not horrible. We've had lower costs, we've had higher cost map assets provided to us by Upland or made available to us by Upland. And these are in UPX, which I enjoy. And also, there's some stuff coming along with it. We can talk about that as well. Upland's giving away the Bermuda Power properties again. Plus, a bonus you'll have a chance to win an exclusive Bermuda property. I also think they're misusing the term exclusive when we talk about properties because we talk about exclusive collections of properties, but that's okay. Upland likes the word exclusive and they like all of its meanings. Uh, by taking part in the sale, obviously you have a chance to get that Bermuda property. We're sure that would look great in your property collection. Absolutely. Let's get some Bermudas. Once we have too much Bermuda, probably not as exciting, but people have been very excited by, by Bermuda so far. Registration is open now with a sale starting 9 a.m. on Tuesday, the 16th of April. Again, today, tax day. Make sure you tax your taxes are filed if you're in the U.S. or your extension's in. Otherwise, you'll get yourself in trouble. But uh, today is the day. Between now and tomorrow at 8 a.m. PT, get registered. This is a registered required sale. You did have to... You know, already buy an ornament bundle. If you didn't, you can't be part of the sale. If you did, you have to register as well. 9 a.m. PT tomorrow. The sale starts. Don't wait. Get involved. Get ready. If you want to buy an Upex, here's your opportunity to do so. You haven't had one in a while. Check out the full details here. Upland me. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at that announcement. Blossom season map asset sale. Look at that. We see all this. We've already looked at that. Exclusive access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of six random Blossom map assets. Ooh, six different ones. These assets are designed with retro-futuristic aesthetic, a.k.a. steampunk. Uh, perfect for enhancing your Upland Blossom property theme. Yeah, there's some, there's some flower theme in there. We'll get in that. But definitely more steampunk than anything else. Every purchase isn't just an expansion of your asset collection. It also grants you an entry into a special drawing. Three lucky participants will win a property in Bermuda, uh, expanding their real estate portfolio to one of the most exclusive locations up in at this time. There's a lot more properties in Bermuda. There's a limited number there now. As we get more and more Bermuda, less and less exclusive. But right now, very exclusive. People are excited about it. People fought to get one property. People made a mistake like myself 
and thought it was uh, all a joke. I was still there, still trying to mint, didn't get a chance to do so. But those people made a mistake, thought it was a joke. Listen to me, I do apologize. It wasn't a joke. Um, and didn't think Mabuna was actually going to open that day. Bermuda did open that day. They didn't get a chance to get their property. This is a way to do it. Every purchase isn't, like I said, just an expansion of your asset collection. Again, special drawing, lucky participants. Let's take a look at these. Blossom, Season, Robot 1, Robot 2, and Robot 3. 200 mints of Robot 3, 150 mints of Robot 2, Robot 100 mints. Again, we got to have variable exclusivity. We have to have variable rarity when we talk about these because now people you know, have to look at this as being a 1 of 100 versus 1 of 200. Now that they, they care more about Blossom <coughs> Robot 1 than Blossom Robot 3. I don't know. Blossom Robot 3 has twice as many eyes as Blossom Robot 1. I don't know. If that if that's valuable for people, look at this Blossom Robot Two has only one eye. I guess I guess having that second eye, if you ask me, there's fewer overall with two eyes than one eye. So I don't know. I don't know. It comes down to the market, uh, the total number of uh, of mints of available mints for any one NFT does not determine its value wholly and solely. There's other aspects, utility. I don't know what utilities here other than looking pretty in your property. That's in the utility. Utility and aesthetic value, those play a role. Those always play a role when we talk about NFTs. It's not just it's not just the fact that there's three of them. They also have to look a certain way. People have to engage with them a certain way. And again, public sentiment, what people feel about them. They can look gorgeous, but people might have one reason or another why they don't like them. That will affect the value in the market. And, of course, this isn't about value in the market. This is about spending optics and decorating your property. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you don't like robots and you like flowers, but you like them to be made out of metal, here's the metal flowers. Blossom Flower 1, 100 mints. Blossom Flower 2, 150 mints. Blossom Flower 3, 200 mints. The sale starts tomorrow, 9 a.m. PT. Registrations open now until 8 a.m. PT tomorrow, the 16th of April on uh, Tuesday, and again, sale kicking off at 9 a.m. PT. This is a register. Get a get lucky. Get a good spot in sale. Purchase, and then have a cool down, and then purchase again. Have another cool down type sale. Uh, there's a total of 900 of these blind packs. You don't know what you're going to get. 900. You're buying one asset. It's random. You get what you get. Um, type situation here. That's why we have. Uh, oops. Uh, but we, again, randomize. You you get the order you get. You don't know you don't know what you're going to end up with as far as your order ahead of time. Um, that's why you you register. That's why you see where you are in line. That's why you buy as many times as you can or as you choose to, um, because you want to get uh, get as many as you can if you want to decorate multiple properties. And that's the thing about these sales is, um, at least for me. I come into some of them thinking I want four or six or eight or 12. And if I want four or six or eight or 12, look at me, I'm registering here right now, just so you can see it's that simple. Um, You know, I want four or six or eight or 12. I'm going to buy as many as I can. If I'm doing that and you're not registered and you're not buying at the time of sale and there's 20 other or 30 other or 50 other people who are doing the same thing. They may not hang out all day with 900 of those available. 10,000 OPEX each. This is important to put out there. 10,000 OPEX is not the same as $10. It could be infinitely less valuable to someone than $10 if $10 is something that they can't reach into their proper their pocket easily and put in there. They don't have a credit card or they don't use a credit card regularly uh, to put money into the game of Upland. It's not something that they can justify doing. That could be... The difference between a, a meal or two. Again, we have a big, we have a big uh, population. We have a lot of people in other parts of the world. We have people in the in this country who have a hard time justifying putting fifty dollars in upland one week and fifty dollars another. It does add up to everybody. So if they're not able to put money in right now, but they can put an upex, but they have that upex that they're getting from dividends, but they have that upex that they sold properties, they have that upex that they got as a reward for completing the collection from potentially a relatively recent recent city. Maybe they got almost ten thousand or ten thousand upex just from completing a collection in South Lake Tahoe, and maybe they could take that and spend that here. It is a lot 
easier, a lot lower threshold for a lot of people to spend 10,000 upics than $10. And here is a rare sale where we haven't had one for a while that is upics exclusive. And here we go. Map asset, 10,000 upics tomorrow, 9 a.m. PT. Purchase if you want to. Again, don't buy them if you don't want them. Don't buy them. Eh, I won't say don't buy them if you just to speculate on them, but I will say, I mean, buy them because you like them. That's what the what the there for. Realistically, I would like to get a few for my properties. I'm definitely not buying the secondary. I love to put that out there. Not buying the secondary when people says, "Oh, I heard that you really want these." Yes, I really want them to buy them at mint price of ten thousand upix a piece, not to buy some at forty five thousand upix if they all get nicked out quickly and. And uh, some people want to hold on to theirs, and some people want to flip theirs. I, again, I don't want to be paying a, a, a two or three times multiplier to pick them up. I'm more than happy to pay a mint price up when didn't set the price too crazy, but uh, three times multiplier seems crazy to me, at least in this case. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be from the market. We'll have to see how it sugars itself out, how it works itself out. Uh, keep in mind, I got two other things still here. 287 of 300 left. Oh, those Genesis Week tickets aren't selling strong since they've gone into the store. Keep in mind, that's not the only place they've been selling. Um, they, you know, for people who it's easier to purchase, and again, this USD purchase here, uh, there's a little escalated amount here with looks like a fee gets built in. Uh, there is there is a little easier, or it is easier for an event, right? For some people, people have already bought tickets elsewhere. Uh, Eventbrite, where I bought my ticket. People bought a bunch of Eventbrite before they came and they gave them up. And so uh, the 287 out of 300, that seems there's a lot left. Maybe there is, uh, but there are more more that, that uh, got sold than the 13 right here. But looking forward to uh, seeing that number get lower. Looking forward to seeing more people coming to Genesis Week 2024 in person event. Uh, Blossom Season Pass, obviously, today is the last day to burn if you want tomorrow or Get them burnt here shortly. If you want to go ahead in tomorrow, get your new airdrops. The drops are going to happen tomorrow for the cosmetics. So that is something that happens every Tuesday in Blossom Season. Keep that in mind. If you already burnt your pass, you will be getting something. If you don't burn your pass until after the snapshot tomorrow, you won't get this week's airdrops. Uh, they're never, there's never a way to recoup them. That's never going to happen. So keep that in mind. And look at, but look at, but look at. Apparently, there's still 52 of the small townhouse bundles still available. Well, we have gone past the burn of the block explorers. So the valuation of the people buying and selling those has changed a little bit. Um, but we still have the structure ornaments. We still have a structure ornament contest for now until the end of blossom season. So maybe you know, there's, people, there's 52 people more who want that townhouse bundle. But that, again, was a relatively successful Ornament sale here again. Ornament bundled with a block explorer. Um, I did okay with it because again, I decided I wanted to keep my ornaments. Wasn't as excited about the block explorers. Got some profit out of the block explorers. Kept the ornaments, and I was happy. Um, and other people uh, again went the other way, and they said, "Oh, I really like block explorers, but I'm not as excited about the ornaments." Whatever the case was, uh, it's kind of a choose your own adventure here in Upland right now, and I. I really like that about where we are in the game. Uh, but I, what I also like and what I'm also excited about is a couple things that I think are coming later in Blossom Season. I think they're coming because I'm told they're coming. One of which is we should be getting an AM and Spark in a not-so-distant future. It's supposed to be happening here sooner rather than later. Uh, the other thing that we know is supposed to be happening in Blossom Season is a city release, so keep our eyes out. I do want to do another reminder here because I... You know, I, if I don't do this once a week, then uh, people will say they weren't weren't warned and they never heard the concept. And the warning and the concept is this. We did not have a strong warning from the game of Upwind, the team of Upwind, when we had the locking of cars to the city that they're in. You can't transfer a car between cities using your wallet. You have to use transportation. You have to drive that car between cities. There was people who didn't see that this had happened when it first happened. It was a trickle in effect. It took a little while before people realized that was the case, but that was ultimately done as soon as transportation between cities was released. And then it was kind of, there was this little transferring between continents where for a short period of time you could travel between continents and an up and lock that because that was something they intentionally wanted to say you're stuck in your continent with your car. You buy a new car 
for a new continent. Maybe, just maybe at some point in the future, there's a way to travel internationally with your car. Uh, maybe you go to a border checkpoint or something. Maybe you get on a boat and transfer between boats. We don't know. Uh, I'm not even going to speculate that it is coming, but I will say it's possible. But the cars are locked into that into the continent they're in. Uh, you have to travel between city. It does take time. If you travel into a city that doesn't have a car, you have to travel out again to get back to your car. Easy enough, simple enough, and your car is not coming to you by magic. If you do mint a car or no mint a car, purchase a car, um, you can go and choose where that gets set. But if you have a car already, you cannot just go and say, go, go gadget car, come meet me in blank city. It will not drive on its own. That's been set now. So with that warning, with that reminder, with that concept, let's extend that to map assets. This is something that could, should, will at some point happen to make the idea of map assets make sense. It to make the idea of transportation transportation for cargo or transporting cargo make sense, we have to see pro, um, properties either having map assets locked to them or map assets being locked to the cities they're in so you can move them between properties but not between cities. That has to happen at some point. So it may be sooner rather than later because the cars came out of nowhere because we've been told that cars as transportation was coming that shortly after or sometime after cars as transportation cars as having the ability to move cargo that's supposed to be happening at some point and it could come out of the blue so i'm just going to put that warning out there something to keep in mind something to to consider uh, when we're talking about properties and uh you know there's some argument that um your your wallet in upland being used to magically exchange assets between one party and the other uh, lacks analog, lacks analog of the physical space that belongs to map assets. And I think that's going to be figured out here in the not so distant future. Um, keep that in mind. Maybe that's not going to be the case for all legits. Maybe legits that are more display legits and they don't have a physical space. They don't take up a physical space in a city um, and on a, on a property next to your structure. Maybe just maybe they don't operate the same way but i think that uh cars as cargo or cars in the use of cargo transportation something that's coming keep that in mind can't guarantee when can't tell you when but if you want to just as a precaution move some of your assets closer to the places where you want them to be if you have back inventory for your showroom maybe it's worth keeping that back inventory if it can't fit on your showroom lot, maybe put it next to it. If you have 15 cars, um, it's going to take you a little while to move them now. Just like it'll, it might take you a little while to move map assets in the future. Because you have to go travel between cities, grab the car, drive it over, travel between cities, get back to that other car, that place where your other car is, drive your car into that city, get back on the plane or train, get from that city A and get over to city B, get back into that car, drive that back over. That's going to take a long time. It's time consuming. And you could be doing the same thing when it comes to map assets in the, at some point in the not so distant future. Something worth considering. But for tonight, for today, for Monday, Monday the 15th of April 2024, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we do this Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. PT, getting started in the Upland Cafe with the idea of getting out and, and being broadcast and having a recording. So we can, uh, again, you can watch it the next day. You can be uh, be cooking breakfast the next day and catch up on what happened the day before in the game of Upland. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, love to see people there. We get to share things going on. Sometimes people get in and make comments. That's okay. That's great. Um, but, of course, if you are here in the Upland Cafe, still love the cafe, still love that we can do this in voice in the cafe. And as always, um, as we do figure things out, ooh, going back and looking at some notes here, uh, someone posted that level two to level three was double to 7,200 points. Yes, points carry over. So um, it's 36 uh, points to 7,200 from two to three. Yes, um, but that is that is easier and quicker. Or Actually, it's easier and quicker to get from one to two. I think that was the point Kassik bar was. It's easier to get from one to two. So by getting to two at least you're going to get a better better qualifier than one i'm looking forward to the fact that it's 
very possible and get stuck in that level two range. And I'm okay with that because at least that means at least that means I'm not stuck in level uh, guest, you know. And because uh, I don't want to feel like a guest, I want to feel like a guest in Upland. I want to feel like Upland's my home. So it's nice to see. And thank you, King Cody, for putting that. Twenty four hundred gets you into level two. Thirty six hundred. Well, sorry, twenty four hundred gets you into level one. Thirty six hundred gets you into level two. Seventy two hundred gets you into level three. Um, and um, that's easy. You know, that's that 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 that's an easy thought there for me. And of course, I mean, it's meant so that that the higher levels are going to be harder and harder to get to. And I'm okay with that. Um, just as long as it's not ending up in level one, I will at least feel a little better about myself. Lily Phil, congratulations, already in level two. Uh, at the 3,600 point range, that was this task, getting her with the five reposts, getting her into, or with this last activity here, the five reposts, getting her into that uh, level two range. So she's already there. I'm just hoping to get there by the end. But she's already there uh, with some more activities here coming up. And uh, again, uh, with the uh, with the four airs, three four fifths of the way there, Lily. Just get the last one. Get get you in. Get you that the um, one time bonus. And you're only getting the multiplier for a month and a half. But at least giving you that multiplier. So um, yeah, it is it is something. But uh, I did see. Um, you know, I did see what was going on, that there was a lot of people pay, paying the the premiums to try to get into some areas. Once people caught on, once people bought up the bomb in the market on those air properties, uh, bought up the bomb the market on the spark and the drop properties, you know, we did see that uh, people who had properties left were either the ones that were already priced high or people going back and pricing them up, pushing them up. So definitely, definitely worth worth seeing that there. Um, Ocean Ferry that's gonna get eaten by a squid. You lose your car, you gotta go buy another one. What an idea, Castic Bar. I really hope that isn't the case. Maybe that's next year's April Fool's joke about uh, oh, by the way, now we've got the oceans, now that we've got ships again. Th this is all speculation. There has been no announcement about ships, no idea when they're coming, no idea if they're coming, but that's one way of trying between, between continents, but yes. April Fool's Day 2025. We're introducing sea monsters. And oh, it's April Fool's Day joke. At, at least give me like the, I like the obvious ones. Give me an obvious April Fool's Day joke. Make it fun. Make it tongue in cheek. Make it so that there's no uh no real peril. That's that's what happens. People feel peril. People decide to do something or not to do something because they think an April Fool's Day joke is changing the game up significantly. Um, but very much so uh looking forward to uh the more that's coming. And I think that's where we are is the more that's coming between now and Genesis week, 2024, learn at, learn more, more things are coming. I think just features in the games that are going to get snuck in before Genesis week. And obviously Genesis week is going to bring new things with it. So thank you so much for being here. If you're in the upland cafe, feel free to unmute your mic. The show is over. The floor is yours.